for it. Just, you don't need to dig. You can just go up there. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. My name is Laura Grimm, and I will be your worship associate this Sunday. I'd like to welcome you to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Wayne County. We gather to worship, our hearts alive with hope that here we can truly be seen, that here we will be welcomed into the garden of this community, where the simple and the elegant, the fluted and the frilled, the shy and the dramatic complement one another and are treasured. May we know that here, each contributes in their own way to the beauty of the whole. Come, let us worship all genders, sexualities, politics, clappers and non-clappers, progressive or conservative. We will nurture a community of open hearts and minds, offering all a safe harbor for personal and spiritual growth. We will celebrate diversity and strive to provide compassion, dignity, and justice in the web of life. Your presence here is a gift that brings us closer to that understanding. We're an active community that lives its values way beyond the hours of Sunday service. And I would like to call your attention to, to a few of these uh, announcements. Every fourth Sunday, the UUs join the racial justice team on the square at noon. Today, April 23rd, is our day. Join members of the racial justice team and other local advocates on the square to stand vigil for racial justice. Oh, I like this announcement. <laughs> Come get your hands dirty. The annual Landscape Work Day will be on May 7th after the service. Come in your finest garden clothes and gloves and knee pads. <clears throat> Come to church that day. And after the service, all are welcome to pitch in and show off the beauty of our grounds. Work up an appetite because there will be a potluck after the service. Please contact Ruth Sewell. Ruth, are you? There's Ruth. And Mary Gentry, is Mary here today? Okay, um, if you have questions. Again, that's May 7th. If you would like to find out more about our activities, feel free to ask Karen Skubik, our membership coordinator after the service. Thank you, Laura. And as I was standing there looking around, I thought how fun it is to have Visitors today amongst, we have people that have been coming for 50 years, Joe Downs, right? And we have people who come once in a while that live in Massachusetts, uh, Maddie and Tim's family, Andrew Noble and Emily and the girls. Thank you for coming. And then we haven't seen, where's uh, Michael Ann and Haley? Where are you guys? There they are. Yeah, so many of you might remember them since pre-COVID times and it's so nice to have you, have you back. Um, are there any other um, visitors who might be here who have never in, been introduced before who might want to introduce themselves? Yes, you think so? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashley and this is Peyton. We live in North Canton. Thought we'd stop in today. Welcome. Welcome, Ashley and Peyton. Great to have you here. Anybody else? It's so nice to have all of you here, 50 years, first time, or whatever. Thank you for coming. Our worship services are as varied as our beliefs. Please join us often to experience a wide variety of services with us. Today, People of all ages will join together for the full service as we worship together in this beautiful sanctuary under the watchful eyes of the trees that are just starting to push leaves. We invite you to worship with opportunities for movement, song, contemplation, and communion. 
This morning, we have several additional elements for sensory participation in the worship here up at the front. I thought I saw a dinosaur, maybe not. There are various kinds of dirt, sand, and rocks. Please come and get your hands a little dirty as you play quietly. Now I ask you to open your minds and quiet your cell phones and let us worship together. I want to um, <laughs> want to welcome Katie and Helen up here to help us light our chalice this morning. We light this chalice to celebrate Unitarian Universalism. This is this is the Church of the Open Mind. This is the Church of the Loving Heart. This is the Church of the Helping Hands. We light this chalice to remind ourselves to treat all people kindly because they are all our siblings. To take good care of the earth because this is the home we share with all creation. To live lives fully of goodness and love because that is how we all, this is how we will all become the best beings we can be. Let us now rise in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. The music can be found in the Teal Hymnal, uh, number 361, or Enter, rejoice, and come in. Don't be 
enter, rejoice, and come in. If that's all we did, I'd be good today, but we've got so much more. My name is Jenny Papp. I am the Director of Religious Education in this congregation. And today is a really special day. For lots of reasons, it is a special day, but I'm going to start with the first one, okay? The first, yeah. The first, that would make it special, wouldn't it? <laughs> Unique. Um, the first reason that today is special is because we are all going to worship together the whole time today. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew, knew that. We're all going to stay here the whole time. We are going to sing together. We already did that. We are going to listen to some more music together. That was amazing already. We are going to tell stories together. We are going to play in the dirt. Did you all see this dirt? There is dirt here. You can play with the dirt if you would like. There are things to play with. Anytime, by the way, you may play in the dirt as well. There's also Play-Doh if you would like some Play-Doh. Okay. We are going to move. We are going to pray together. We are going to bless ourselves and this world that we are a part of together. And we're going to do all that as we worship together today. The other reason today is special is because we're celebrating Earth Day today. Earth Day was yesterday, right? Does anybody know? Yeah. And we're celebrating that today, and we're celebrating that as part of our interconnectedness. We're part of an interconnected web, and we have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a responsibility to take care of all of the creation that we are connected with. Did anybody do anything special this week for Earth Day? Anybody? Did you? You look like you wanted to say something. No? Anybody do anything special for Earth Day today, this week? What did you do? Um, we ate a special breakfast. You ate a special breakfast. Excellent. Anybody else do anything special for Earth Day this week? Um, I wore like a shirt that said, be kind to all. Be kind to all. That's a nice shirt. Nancy, what did you do special for Earth Day? We planted, it was bird seed, but we planted seeds with our classroom of eight. All right. Did anybody else do anything special for Earth Day this week? I put in a new lawn. My back still hurts. My back still hurts. <laughs> anybody else do anything special for Earth Day this week? Excuse me. place where I work, we all got together and we picked up all the trash around our building. Nice. Wow. All right. In the rain. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice Earth Day, wasn't it? The Earth was very happy with that. What? I visited a downtown display of, uh, of Earth-friendly vehicles, electronic ones. Cool. Jay Clemmy was there with his, showing his car off. Aha. Uh -huh. I tilled up our small garden. Anyone else want to share? Martin. All right. uh, with the Worcester Bike Crew, we did a uh, compost tour of Worcester led by Fred Michelle. All right. I planted my peas. <laughs> In the rain. <laughs> Anyone else? This, I did this at school. Um, my, uh, you know that our, our, like, something we did, like, it's like a newspaper we do, I forget what it's called. It's like a kid's newspaper, and it was about, it was, it was about making art out of trash, tra trash out of art. Art, art out of trash. Right, I knew what you meant, <laughs> art out of trash. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Thank you. So today, well, I should 
probably leave that here in case I need it again. So today, um, like I said, we're celebrating Earth Day and our interconnectedness with all of the living things um, in our world. So I have a story today about some trees. There was in a town a lush little forest, kind of nestled right in between some buildings. Okay? And in that forest, there was a little tree. We call little trees saplings. This sapling right here, do you see this little sapling here? This sapling was named Sammy. I found this sapling over there alongside the driveway calling my name. <laughs> so here it is. <laughs> so this is Sammy, our sapling, and this is Grandpa Pine. I'm sure someone will correct me, this is probably actually not a pine tree, but it looks like one to me right now. It's a spruce, it's so. I'm not sure if that's, is that different? No. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. So this is Grandpa Pine. So in this forest, Sammy was just starting in tree time, was pretty young, okay? Only a few years old. And was just really excited about becoming a big grown-up tree someday and watched all the trees dancing in the wind. The wind made Sammy shiver a little as opposed to dance, but he wanted to be big someday and, and dance in the, in the wind. And one day, Grandpa Pine looked down and said, well, hello there. You look like you're new in the neighborhood. And Sammy says, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty new to the neighborhood. And I, I'm just really um, excited to become part of this great forest. And he said, well, welcome. And you don't need to be afraid. You look like you're shivering, like you're a little scared. You don't need to be afraid because we have an amazing community here in this forest. We have a network of love and care and community. We actually named it. Sammy's like, you named your network, okay. Is this a forest? And he says, no, we've named it the Wood Wide Web. Oh. <laughs> WWW for short. We actually have social media, www.forest.net for network. So you can check us out there if you would like. I actually don't know, so don't check. I'm not sure what's there. <laughs> but anyway, Sammy said, wow, well, what is this about, this community, this network, right? And he says, well, there are animals in our network, and there are trees of all kinds and sizes and other plants, and down in the ground, there are other organisms that support our network. There, there's something, there's a fungus, there's fungus or fungi in that network down there that help our whole community and they're part of the community. We support them and they support us. Our leaves can collect sunshine and create food to feed those other organisms down under the ground. Sammy was amazed. He had no idea that he was part of something so incredible, really big. And he imagined his roots stretching down and Sammy closed his little plant eyes and he imagined his roots stretching down into the ground and started kind of paying attention. And he noticed that when the trees, the big trees were swaying, there was some vibration down there. And he started kind of tapping into that feeling and started noticing that community out there. And Grandpa Pine continued, he said, so in this special network, it helps us share water, it helps us share nutrients. It even helps us communicate. We can warn each other if there's danger coming. We can communicate if one of us needs something and the other might be able to share that with us. It was fascinating. And Sammy was so glad to be a part of that. Something that cared for each other, a community that cared for each other. And as the years went by, Sammy got taller and taller and stronger and stronger and was able to start to give some more to that network. 
And I think about this out here. And if we've got how many trees? Can anybody count how many trees? How many trees are out there? What do you think? How many? One trillion. One trillion, you think? I, you know, to be honest, and I don't know how many, if there are not that many trees, how many living organisms? I, we couldn't count that high. How many living organisms that we can see out that window? On the, I can see the ground, you know. So anyways, it makes me feel very special that we are in the, um, surrounded by this right now. And um, that although we are indoors, I'm inviting you today to really imagine you are enveloped in this canopy for the rest of our service. We're going to do a song right now. It's a tree song. I'm going to invite everybody who is willing and able to stand so that we can get ready to do this song. If you cannot or do not want to stand, root yourself in in whichever part of yourself wants to be rooted in, okay? I've sung this in the car all morning. You'd think I wouldn't need, but then I get a little nervous and I have to look. <laughs> so we're going to do this four times. So the first part, I'm just going to do it all by myself. <laughs> then I'm going to do each line and you'll repeat it for me with the movements. And then the third and fourth time, we're going to do it all together. Okay, you ready? Everybody ready? You want to stand? We're going to move. So if you, if you want to stand, because so, we're... We're going to sing and, sing and move. OK. Standing like a tree with my roots dug down, Bran branches wide and open. Come down the rain, come down the sun, come down the fruit to my heart that's open to standing like a tree. All right, now we're gonna do it. I'll say, say a line and then you repeat it. Okay, everybody do that. Standing like a tree, standing like a tree with my roots dug down, stuck down, branches wide and open. Branches wide and open. Come down the rain, come down the rain, come down the sun, come down the sun, come down the fruit to my heart that's open. Come down the fruit to my heart that's open to standing like a tree to standing like a tree. All right, all together. Standing like a tree with my roots dug down, branches wide and open. Come down the rain, come down the sun, come down the fruit to my heart that's open to standing like a tree. Standing like a tree with my roots dug down, branches wide and open. Come down the rain, come down the sun, come down the fruits to my heart that's open to standing like a tree. Let me see, see that. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Our faith is centered on the belief that we can make this world a better place for all who dwell in it. In order to realize that vision, we need both the motivation and the means. Your donations help the community put its faith into action by supporting our programming and our facilities. This morning and throughout the month of April, Donations that are not designated for another purpose will be split with Trinity 
United Church of Christ breakfasts. Each week, Trinity UCC serves a free, excuse me, each weekday, Trinity UCC serves a free hot breakfast in their fellowship hall to anyone in the Worcester community. The offering will now be collected and gratefully received. Please join in, me, join in this unison reading with me. The words are on the screen. Let us be grateful when we are able to give, for many do not have that privilege. Let us be grateful for those who share their gifts with us, for we are enriched by their giving. Let us be grateful even for our needs so that we may learn from the generosity of others. Please join me now in the spirit of meditation and of prayer. Earth Day is perhaps one of the holiest days. A day where we are reminded of whence we came. The earth that grounds us, connects us, nurtures us, to which we will return again. Our beautiful mother. Today we pray for her. We pray that she will treat us kindly despite how we treat her. I think especially of the community of East Palestine right now, how their mother has been spoiled by our reckless actions. How the air, how the earth, how the community has been deeply hurt by our negligence. We pray the Mother Earth will forgive us. We pray that our little actions of respect will bear fruit. We pray that the cars that we drive will become kinder, the things that, will be, that are produced in our country will become greener, and that we will have the foresight to understand that it is our own survival. Mother Earth, forgive us, for we love your beauty. We love your bounty. May we always remember and respect what you have for us. May it be so.
Thank you, choir. Respect. Respect for the interdependent web of life of which we are all a part. Anybody know where that comes from? Number seven. Ding, ding, ding. Number seven. Our seventh and most recently ratified principle that is in the UUA bylaws. Added in 1985. Perhaps our most radical principle. The principle was added in 1985 to address the environmental crisis. Anybody remember the word smog being a word synonymous with Los Angeles? Right? Acid rain, all of that wonderful, wonderful stuff that we have actually made some decent progress on over the last 40 years, despite our best efforts. The interdependent web of life that the seventh principle is referencing in its words is the environment. It is the connection that we have, that interdependent web to the flora and the fauna of this great big blue marble on which we are housed. It's a reminder that we need to be careful that our immediate actions can cause harm down the line. Our survival is directly tied to how we treat the world we live in. Yes? Yes. The world being that out there. The natural world. And selfish desires, when put into that world, can cause trouble. For example, this was just in a science fiction book I read, but it might sound familiar to you all, and I'm sure there's actual case studies of this. There is a beautiful spot out there for camping. It's got a wonderful natural lake that has wonderful fish. It's got beautiful scenic vistas. All the things you would want in a camping site, including wild wolves. Now, obviously the humans don't want to camp with wild wolves because the wolves like humans as snacks. So what do the humans do if they want to camp there? They get rid of the wolves, right? And suddenly it's a beautiful camping site, right? Except for the wolves are gone. Now what happens? The deer! Everything else overruns. The deer, the raccoons, the possums, and all this is science fiction world. All the little mammalian creatures run over the place. And all of a sudden, all of that fresh fauna that's all over the place is a resource that has so many people compete, or people, animals competing for it, that it goes away. And this camping spot, no longer a really good camping spot, right? Everything becomes desolate. This is what happens when the humans forget about interconnectedness and just how important it is. That is what is so great about Earth Day. It is the big holy day of interconnectedness, reminding us that our survival is hinged on how we treat the world around us, right? Let's go back to that 1985 seventh principle change. Do you know what the really big change was in 1985 with the principles? The huge change? They changed the wording of the other six. Guess what words they took out? Brotherhood. Mankind. Do you know why? Because the women leadership in the UUA were sick and tired of being overlooked. Yeah, you can clap for that, Janice. Yeah. The women said, look, we want to be leaders in this, and this language doesn't include us. Can we fix that, please? Do you think there was any argument about this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As one of the bearers of a Y chromosome, I can tell you that we don't always let go of those things. 
when we should, and we eventually realized if we wanted to make everyone feel connected, we had to put aside things that might be selfish for some of us, right? That the connection was much more important than the words brotherhood or mankind. And if Unitarian Universalism was going to survive as a faith, it needed to change what was a selfish aspect of it. And its survival was tied to how it treated everyone around it. The seventh principle, environmentalism is so much more than just about the environment. It is about how we need to behave. It is a cultural shift. To focus on relationships and connections as opposed to individual growth. There's a wonderful bit that was in the Adrian Marie Brown book, uh, Emergent Thinking. She's talking about trees, and we all know about that mycelial network underneath the trees where they all communicate with each other and say how bad things are coming and when good things are going around. And I was thinking, uh, for those of you who know where I live on Quinby, there used to be, apparently before I moved in, there was a great big tree in my front yard that blew over in a windstorm, right? Do you ever see a whole forest get blown over in a windstorm? Why does, you've seen a whole forest get blown over in a windstorm? No? Good. I hope you, you didn't. I mean, a hurricane can take out a lot, but... When you have a, one tree on its own, its roots are just in the soil, right? But when you have a network of trees, those roots, what happens? They tangle up. They get intermingled. It's like the trees are all holding hands. They interlock. Now when you're trying to blow over one tree, you're trying to blow over all of them. Interconnected. That is how you survive. Doing it on your own, thinking of just yourself, can often get you blown over. And it is something that is so counter to American culture, especially in this moment. The idea of interconnectedness over independence. Toxic independence. It is great to have freedom. I personally like having certain freedoms. I like being able to worship where I please. But freedoms are dangerous without interconnection. When you are free and do not think of how it affects others, dangerous things happen. And we have seen that this week over and over and over and over. When we are not connected, we forget that people pull into the wrong driveway and it's not an assault on their house. When we are not connected, we forget that children chase balls into our yards and it's not an assault on our property rights. When we are not interconnected, we forget that people confuse whose car is whose and open the wrong door. We forget that people can come to the wrong house to pick up their friends and relatives when we are not connected. Yes, we have freedom but to blindly attack without the most cursory attempts to connect, to assume everything is a danger to you as an individual is not only a bad way to live in the world, it is a way to assure self-destruction. We cannot survive as a species is all we do is attack. Our survival is tied to how we treat each other. And nature has a better way and has been showing us this better way for millennia. That interdependent web, 
the inescapable network of mutuality, as Reverend Dr. King put it, the idea that all the world is one. It's those connections, folks, the connections that are under the service that keep us together, that ensure our survival. Nature has shown us that, yes, sometimes we do need competition, but more often than not, the best way to ensure the survival of one is to ensure the survival of all. Not just the humans, not just the wolf, not just the deer, all of us. All of us. All of us need to be included, my friends. Our survival depends on it. I thought this was our second annual Dirt Communion. And then, because I helped lead one last year, and then I was looking through some files, um, searching on the words Dirt Communion, and lo and behold, there were others, at least one other that I ran across um, back in 2017. Maybe there were others. So anyway, so we'll just call it an annual Dirt Communion. <laughs> Does everyone have some dirt? Maybe dirt that you brought, or dirt in a little cup like this. And if you don't, Karen is going to help us. Please raise your hand. And I'm talking about all people, big, little. Everyone needs a little cup of, of dirt if you don't have one. So you might have brought it, or for some, those of you who didn't do it, this dirt that you've got here is from our church grounds, sacred dirt, right over there. Don't look for the hole I dug. <laughs> but this is a piece of the holy ground that we all walk on, whether it's your special dirt or whether it's dirt from here. And as we explore and honor this dirt, we're giving voice to the countless multitudes of micro and macro organisms that we inter, uh, intertwine with, that we exist with on this planet. So I invite you, look at it closely. Did you know that there are more microorganisms in a handful of healthy soil than there are humans on the earth? I can believe that. That's billions of life forms in a handful of soil, billions. Healthy soil is like a sponge. It absorbs the rainfall. It filters our water. And from that sponge, seedlings emerge. Their photosynthetic cells reach to the sun. Touch it. If you haven't touched it yet, touch it. Stir it up a little with your fingers. Those seedlings draw in carbon and other elements from the air, and they turn it into the simple sugars for nourishment. Plants make more sugar than they need, and they send it out through their roots into the soil to nourish the abundant networks of fungi and other life that lives on or near their roots. Smell it. In return, the fungi and other micro life break down those minerals in the dirt to feed the plants. And in time, the plants and other life die and decompose and create more rich, fertile dirt. We all learned this already. We all know this. I'm not giving you any exciting special news. I'm just asking you to really think about it and smell it and get your fingers in it. This then gives us the, the nutrient-rich food that we need and other large beings need. 
It's a complex network, a complex system of life that exists within each and every living being. And we're all interdependent ecosystems that need to stay in balance. That's a, regeneration is very complex. Highly developed living system. It's not one piece. It's this highly developed, this big living system. And it works so well when it's allowed to. And when it's tended with care. Today, your little bit of soil that you brought with you maybe might be where you find your peace or maybe you brought it from a place where you found your where you find your power or your joy maybe from your garden maybe from your playground maybe from a hiking trail or maybe from the resting place of someone or something that was special to you something that you loved there's power in all of that. So in a moment, we're going to begin our dirt communion. But right now, I would like you to turn to your neighbor and share about either the dirt that you have brought and its connection for you. Or if you didn't bring any, please share a place or a time when you felt very connected to that earth under your body. Thank you for sharing with your neighbors about your special place of connection. I invite you to return to your space. I'm glad you're excited. That's a good plan. So now we are going to transform our chalice into our place for our dirt communion. Carefully. Many things. 
this here. There we go. There we go. So I want to invite you to come down and share your dirt with this community of faith and trust that we will do something miraculous with it. We will incorporate it back into this sacred place here. We are going to sing a song together as, there we go, where do we come from? As we proceed up and deposit our dirt. So I'm inviting you all to come around this way, up that ramp, this way, deposit your dirt, put your container in here, and move on out that way, okay? In a very controlling, orderly way. Um, <laughs> As the music begins, you can do that. Join in this chant, where do we come from? And the words will be on the screen.
This dirt we have gathered together today will be mixed into the soil of our fellowship gardens as we witness its nourishing strength. May it help us grow in body and spirit as we come together to share the work and rewards of our efforts in this property together. As we offer our blessing, I'll invite you to respond after each of our spoken lines with the words, we bless this dirt. In, in the knowledge that all of us are imperfect, but come together in communities of grace, we, we bless, bless this, this dirt. dirt. In the belief that we humans share an origin and a common destiny, we bless this dirt. dirt. And a sustaining faith in human redemption and growth. We bless this, this dirt. dirt. In the wisdom of science that tells us dirt is an important part of our own health and happiness. We, we bless, bless this, this dirt. dirt. In the understanding that all living creatures are connected and have a right to healthy soil. We bless, we bless this, this dirt. dirt. In hopes that we all continue to grow together in mind and body and spirit, we, we bless, bless this, this dirt. dirt. And may it be so. Please stand in body or spirit as we sing our closing hymn, Love Will Guide Us. benediction, I just wanted to take a moment and thank the Wildwood Winds for their music today. Y'all are hired. Our benediction this morning comes from, who does this come from again? Dahlia. Dahlia. Cabe. Dahlia Barnes Cape. Let us be committed to becoming ever more aware of how this beautiful natural system works and how and to supporting it however we can for ourselves, for our grandchildren, for our descendants, and for the gazillions of nameless, voiceless organisms that cooperatively symbolically sustain and support us all. The earth is alive, so very alive. What each of us does affects us all. Together, we can do what we cannot do alone.